What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and today I wanted to show off an utterly awesome script from Digi, a guy I've mentioned on the channel a number of times because he really does make some of the coolest stuff for Space Engineers. And this is a mod that I've used a few times recently in the group Survival to kind of do things that just wouldn't be possible otherwise. And so I really wanted to show off a bit of how this works and exactly what possibilities you have when using this, in this case, Control Block mod. So we're going to kick off with a really easy example just to get a gist of what exactly this does, what you can do with it. And then at the end I'll show a couple more advanced things that I've used it for recently that I think are pretty damn cool. So in front of me is a vehicle that some of you may recognise and what we're going to do is we're going to put some indicators on it, some signal lights. But we're going to do so in a way that's a bit better than you'd normally have them included. So all we're going to need in this case is the mod running. So in this case we're talking about this control module, I called it control block, control module script. Digi, I'll put all the links down below. And there's a pretty decent guide that goes alongside it, but I felt it would be cool to kind of show you literally how you can use this. So what we're going to do is stick a couple of lights down either side. So these are going to be our signal lights on the back. Not particularly well placed, but that doesn't matter for this example. And we're going to stick a couple of timers down as well. And hey, let's put ones on the front too, just to... Uh, do we have a... Actually, we don't have a suitable spot to put ones on the front, so maybe I'll use the one that's already there. Either way, we've got... Jump in here, and we've now got two new spotlights at the bottom. And hopefully, if I've remembered which way around they'll be, we'll have a... Uh, what should we call this? Left signal. And a right signal. And now what we want to do is make these actually activate when we press left and right. So the other thing we probably want to do is make these a more appropriate colour. Can we get a nice orange, a bit more orangey? That's perfect. The other thing we're going to do is get them to blink. So blink length, about half. And let's get them to blink a bit quicker than that. That looks about right. So we've got our lights set up. For the time being, let's turn those off. They're a little bit annoying. Now we've got two timer blocks, one for each. So we're going to have, we're going to call this one left, call this one right. And in each one, we're just going to go and put those lights we set up earlier. So we've got left signal, and this is just going to be toggle block on off. And then in the other one, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with our right signal, toggle block on off. So that's fine. Nothing special there. All we've done is set some lights up. The interesting part is what we're going to do next. So into the left light, I'm going to write plus input, put a colon, and then... Now, I don't necessarily need to use these parentheses here, but I'm going to, just because it helps you remember for future. And we're going to write C dot strafe left, close our parentheses, and then we're going to put another one. It's going to say release 0.1. So what this is basically doing is telling us that when we press C, the control for strafing left, which in this case is A, to run this timer, and then when we release that control, run it again 0.1 seconds after we release it. So what that's going to do is turn it back off again. And then we can do exactly the same, so we can literally just copy what we've written in here. Do exactly the same, copy this over to the right. We're going to change the strafe left, obviously, to strafe right. And that's all we need to do. So everything's now set up, and if we jump into the controls of the car, go into third-person view, should now be able to see that when I turn right, oh, I've got the right, unfortunately, I've got, the, um, got them the wrong way around. So you can see, in this case, when I'm turning right, it's indicating left, very helpful. And when I'm turning out left, it's indicating right. So obviously, that would be a, a pretty quick and easy fix. The easiest way for me to do that would just be to rename these. So switch these around. Right, and so that we remember what we're doing, let's go and rename the start as well. Typical that I get it wrong when I'm doing the video. Uh, strafe left, there we go. So now everything's set up nicely, and we can go for a little drive, turn the handbrakes off, and when we turn right, it's going to indicate right for us. And when we turn left, it's going to indicate left for us. And then when we let go, it's going to turn off. All pretty simple, but at the same time, something you could never have done before in Space Engineers. And what this script, script, I keep calling it a script, what the control module mod does is allow you to add these sort of strings, and they're very configurable, to any timer block or programming block and define it to pick up on controls on the keyboard. 
So that's a pretty simple example, but I really enjoyed it. It's one Digi himself gave. Because it shows a way of doing things and a thing that you can do that just legitimately wouldn't be possible with what's already built into Space Engineers. And is very, very flexible and easy for someone like me to understand. You know, I'm not a particularly good scripter, I don't understand a lot of what's going on, but I can really easily implement it. And it means in future I'm going to think about doing things like having ships where my ejection sequences are on J, for example, you know, get into the cockpit, you can't take your helmet off at that point, so that control's kind of overridden, and then you whack J and it's your ejection sequence. Something like that, you know, loads of more possibilities. And sometimes it just means that you can understand your controls a bit better. Obviously you've got one to nine, so you can already put timers on buttons. But not only have you only got one to nine that you can use at a time, and you have to skip through bars otherwise, but it's also not necessarily that intuitive. So in front of me here is a few other more complex examples of how this script can be used. And we're going to kick off with the crane. There's a few things here that people will recognize. Uh, and the crane actually uses another mod, well, a script in this case, called Easy Automation. So if you haven't seen the video for this, I'll link it in a card up above. Do go and check that out, because that's another really, really cool mod that basically allows you to write in pseudocode like this, where it's much easier to understand than general scripting. And if you combine it with this controls mod, which of course can run programming blocks, you get a very, very easy way to do some very complex things. So using this crane as an example, some of you guys will remember the way this is normally controlled is with these buttons. And I've done that because I, it's easier to understand. I've laid them out as a WASD sort of thing. So pressing this button will make the boom move that way, etc., etc. But now using this control module mod, I can jump into the seat, and if I just quickly show you what these timers at the back have done, I've basically just gone and made a timer for a bunch of the functions, which runs the script like it would do normally, like the buttons out there do, but this time it gives me much greater levels of control. So I can now be sitting in this seat and actually W, A, S, and D control this crane. Now, I haven't done it perfectly because you'll see that we're actually turning the wheels at the same time. So that's not ideal, but there is a way we can fix that as well. And this leads on to a whole realm of possibilities when it comes to multi-crew ships. And this is, uh, this mod's got so much potential. So if I quickly demonstrate, in here at the moment, we've got this W, A, S, and D set up, and it's like you'd expect. We've got, you see, we've got, um, the input command like we had before. And what's really nice about this mod is it will only pay attention to stuff in this format. So you can actually name things still, like we've got with the W, A, A, W, A, W, D. Interesting, I must have missed that in the copy pasting. But any, either way, you can understand what each one does still. You know, lock, that locks the landing gear, stab, moves the stab stabilizers down. You understand it. And then obviously you've got this plus any means, that's not really necessary here, but it's for when you're doing combinations of keys. So you can actually, and I'll show a demonstration of this shortly, have modifiers involved as well. So only do this when I'm holding shift, for example. Uh, and the release I've already explained, that repeats the action on release. And you can see really simply here what of your sort of functionalities are on and off. And we're going to use this filter one. So to start off with, we're just going to go and find our cockpit, this one here, and we're going to name it. Uh, just name it Crane, really easy. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to name it Crane. I'm going to name it Crane Controls, just so it doesn't get confused because there's a lot of things on this called Crane something. And then uh, let's just use the A, and we're going to go through, and I'm just going to put at the end plus filter, and then in the same format we used before, we're going to filter this down to Crane Controls. And what this is now going to do is only allow this command to work when you're in this seat. And what I can then, of course, do is go to the seat and turn off its control of the wheels and thrusters. And now we've fixed that issue. So when I press A, you'll notice the wheels are no longer moving. It's limited to just when you're in certain parts. And that's where the multi-crew thing comes in. So there's a half decent example there. Let's move on to the tanks, which I know a lot of people saw and Actually, a lot of people didn't get quite what they were doing because these things are far cooler than perhaps you would think. So let's jump into these. These, unfortunately, don't have very good third-person views. So I'm actually going to use Spectator to show what's going on. You can see a few decoys under there. And you'll notice immediately, you see it's driving as I'm pressing W to move the Spectator cam around. And it's turning left and right as I'm pressing A and D. Now, if we freeze the Spectator cam here, let's do that. This whole wheel system, as you'll notice, is rotors. It's not wheels. 
And this is being done by a very clever use of a script using one that he actually, um, he being Digi, actually gives us himself. So we've got two options on here. We're going to ignore this one at the moment, but you'll notice it says M analog shift. So this is a bit different to the other uses we've seen before. And just look at this programming block. So it's got the forwards, backwards, and so on. That's the inputs we're taking. And then I'm using a script that, as I said, Digi has provided. And I love the way he codes as well. I find this he's no, this lot of notation. You can kind of look at his scripts and understand what they're doing. But either way, with this script, very, very clever. It's basically binding itself to the W, A, S, and D controls. And when you hold, press W, it knows to make it needs two different groups, wheels left and wheels right. And again, I'll link all this information down in the video description for how to get your hands on this stuff. And basically what it's doing is when you press W, it's running wheels left forwards and wheels right backwards. When you press A, it's running them in both in the same direction. It's essentially, it's slowing down the inside wheel and speeding up the outside wheel to make you turn. And when you press S, it's flipping them completely around. And the end result, if you get that thing set up is you've got WAS and D controlled proper tank rotor tracks. Now, admittedly, they aren't track tracks because they're just wheels in this case, but you get that really legitimate movement using rotors. So that's half of the coolness of the tank. The other half of the coolness of the tank is, of course, this. Now, again, I can't claim much credit for it. All I've done is implemented a couple of example scripts that Digi provided. I have modified them a bit in a later example. But what this is doing is giving me full analog mouse control over the turret whenever I hold the shift button. So you can see, so we go in the menu and I'll show you again exactly what's going on. This is this. And this is where it's M analog is obviously picking up the mouse's analog input. And then the shift is the modifier. So this is only going to do it when we're holding shift. And then the rest of it you're kind of used to. And then we've just got a very, again, a very clever script in here really not that complex. I was very surprised by how little there was to it that is interpreting our movements into movements on board. Now, the important parts in here are what we see just here. So you can see we've got rotor and rotor two. So these are the names they've got to be. They've got to be in a certain order. You've got to have a horizontal one and then a vertical one, basically. And then this is the things it's doing with them. So you can see it's moving, tracking the mouse's X movement, so left and right and it's tracking the mouse's Y movement up and down, but it's reversing the Y movement to make it all work nicely. But it does mean that we can come in here later and move these Y's and X's and minuses around and rename these to get different functionality out of different turrets, depending on how they're orientated. So in this case, what we've ended up with is a pretty cool tank with a mouse controllable turret that you can use independently. And I haven't got the gun on the bar, that's a shame. <laughs> Which one? That thing's a lovely sound to this thing. Look, listen to that. Lovely. And you can have a lot of fun with it. So you, this thing gets crazy complex. And as you can see, if you combine it with the easy automation or in this case, someone else's clever scripting, because as I said, I'm, I'm not a scripter myself. I'm not bad at sort of looking at what other, other people have done and learning from it, but I'm not some big scripter myself. And you can end up with some really cool, cool designs that can function in ways you weren't expecting. Now, one thing I would like to do at some point is try taking this mouse control script and adapting it, if I can find where I left the crane, and adapting it to give me mouse control over the crane. The crane was never des designed to do that initially. It uses ED automation for the rotor control. But there's no reason why I couldn't use that. And with some slight changes, because this will need to control two vertical rotors, get it completely mouse controlled, which is, I think, pretty damn cool. And hopefully you guys are starting to see some of the possibilities offered by this. Now, second to last thing I want to demo, which is again using that filter thing. So we're going to go and find a, a pilot seat. I'm going to put this on the top and we're going to do the same thing we did last time, basically. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to name this one, not crane controls this time. This time, let's just name it um, co-pilot. Makes sense. And then we can go down and we can find, there you go, this M analog shift. So this is the turret control. And we can assign this turret control with the plus filter. Oop, learn to type. Sorry about the noisy keyboard today as well. My other one's broken. Normally I use a nice quiet one. Uh, what did we call it? I immediately forget what we called it. Copilot. And now only the copilot can control the turret. So if I'm in the right seat, I can control the turret. But if I'm in the wrong seat, I can't. So then think about this. What happens if we then 
add another one of these with another turret and we changed the input shift to something else. And it was worth noting the any comes back to be important here. Any means that basically you can use any of these keys to make it work. Now, in this case, because it's a mouse bind, it's not quite true, but if you were to make other versions of this, you'd want to change, get rid of the any as well as change that to like alt or control or so, any other modifier you want. And then you've got a ship that can have two turrets on it and not just one. And in fact, I've realized that I've actually, I've, the reason I can't control this is because I've renamed the wrong one. So this is, this is not the copilot, this is driver. So I wasn't, uh, uh, let's just um, demonstrate now. I'm holding shift and trying to move around. I can't control that. If I was to go into the driver's seat now, I wouldn't be able to control it. The second I rename this to Copilot, I've got mouse control over the turret, but the guy inside the tank doesn't. So just to confirm, doo -doo -doo. you got to watch camera for this one, nice camera POV. So the guy inside the tank cannot control the turret. It's very hard for me to, um, actually not very hard for me to show you what's going on. Last bit of uh, functionality, uh, what is it called? Go inputs. There we go. So we can, you can actually see I am trying to move the mouse around and I'm holding shift, left shift, and it's not doing anything. This is a nice debug functionality. If you want to work out what a key is called, for example, so that it works in the mod, you can literally just use this to find out. But let's jump into this and you'll see I'm pressing exactly the same controls, but now the turret works. Multiply that a few times and you've got multiple people manning the turrets on your ship for you. How cool is that? Damn. And so just as a final example, some of you may have noticed the little pink glow lurking around the back. Hello, my friend. The point of this, and I'm not showing this all off today, I'm just gonna show you very quickly that in here, this script has actually been edited. So this, you'll see we've got rotor, rotor two, but the minus is gone and the X and Y are backwards. And then if we look at the other one, this is rotor three, rotor four. This is different again, there is a minus. And what that's meant is I now have control on this thing. If I go to this view, independently, the arms both move in the same direction because I've reversed the axes so that all works. And I've changed it so that they're capable of working on their side rather than vertically like those other turrets. Pretty simple, but just gives you an idea how with very limited changes, you could get some really cool functionality out of this. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Uh, I certainly can't wait to see what people come up with with this this mod. I don't, it's been out for a little while and I'm amazed by almost how little attention it's got. So yeah, check it out. I'm sure people can do some cool as hell things with it. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Do not forget to go and give Digi some love as well. Information's all down in the video description. If you didn't like it, I mean, you know where that dislike button is, but please also help me out. Hit me up in the comments and let me know how I can improve. And yeah, cheers for watching guys. I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.